Hi, this is Nancy with On Point TV and Quilting with Nancy, and I would really like to thank you for joining me today. Now, today we're not going to be doing any quilting, but there is a quilt in process behind me that I'll be talking about a little bit, which is why I'm in the painting mood. I have been painting fabrics for... Oh my goodness, it could be almost 10 years, 8 to 10 years at some point, ever since Barb from Joggles actually taught me how. Um, and then it's just been an obsession with mine. I guess the reason that I like it so much is because I'm not just painting to paint, but yet I get that feeling that I'm just painting to paint. But when I'm painting, I'm actually creating fabrics that I will be using in my quilts. And those quilts are all 100% washable. I don't have to be, you know, worried about whether or not the paint's going to stay. The paint is permanent. It is permanent on any porous surface. So fabric, very, very porous. Um, wood, it would be very porous on wood. So anything like that. But the paint can be used on many other surfaces. And for the most part, when you're talking to people about the do this kind of technique that I'm doing with the mono press, um, most of them are doing it on paper, which is super cool. But when I found out that it was permanent on fabric, that was a whole big game changer for me. So let's start with the quilt behind me. The quilt behind me is my 2024 retreat quilt. So I hold a retreat every year in Grand Haven, which is on the west coast of Michigan, right there on Lake Michigan. And it's a beautiful facility. And I can tell you more about that if you're interested, quiltingwithnancy at gmail.com. So this particular quilt, I am using many painted fabrics. I'm also combining it with some of the commercial fabrics too, just to kind of get a good variety. But that's why the colors that I've been working with lately have been lots of blues and yellows and things in between, because this quilt will be called the Lake Michigan Sunset. And this is what it's kind of sort of going to look like. So this is my rendition of it in electric quilt. I do design just about everything in electric quilt. If you want to know more about that and how I can teach you to do these kinds of designs, again, give me an email, quiltingwithnancy at gmail.com. If you're interested in the retreat, same idea. So this will be in April 2024. The tool, main tool that we'll generally use when doing this kind of work, because I'm going to show you something a little different today, is a gel press plate and dilutions paint. Now, all of these things I'm talking about can be purchased at joggles.com. I have put a link below so that when you click on that link, it'll take you to joggles.com. And I'd appreciate that because I get a small commission for everything that I sell, which means I can buy more paint. And that's really fun. This is one of the projects, products that we'll be working with today. This is a paint pen from Posca, P-O-S-C-H-A. This is a wonderful paint pen, and I'm going to show you just a few of the gazillion things that you can do with the Posca paint pen that pretty much is going to be related to making fabrics for quilts. These can be purchased at joggles.com. The one that I'm showing you here is the Mopper. M-O-P apostrophe R. And I'll introduce you to that. These things are just amazing. When you think about paint pens, they come in all different shapes and sizes. The smallest probably point one, maybe like that from Posca. And it has every size between that teensy tiny little kind of ballpoint pen size all the way up to this mopper that is about five eighths of an inch wide. Right. So we will be working on some different things today. These are a couple that I made that I've used the Posca, pen paints, Posca paint pens on. And these were done on a Sue Pen design. Now, Sue Pen is a good friend of mine, and she is a fabric designer for Free Spirit Fabrics. And if you have been quilting for any length of time, you know what Free Spirit Fabrics is. And if you've been watching any of my videos, you've heard me mention Sue's name before. She does an amazing job designing fabrics that are created from things that she has painted. And along with that, she has stencils. So these are some of the stencils in Sue Penn's design, and they're available on her Etsy site, which I also will put links 
below. So I've done a couple of different ones. This is a couple of other trees that I've done. And when you're looking at the fine lines and the dots, those are done with the Posca pens. Here's a couple of others using Sue stencils and gel press plates and Posca pens. So all of that little bit of detail comes from the Posca pens. So what we're going to be working on today are what I call a Posca plaid. This is a plaid fabric that I created using my gel press plates and Posca pens. And I'm going to take you through that process. Now there's also this little one I did, I called it Posca dots because of the way that the Posca mop pens, mopper pens work on the gel press, they don't create a solid dot. The gel press kind of skews it a little bit, but I thought that was really very interesting. So I'm going to take you now to all of the tools on my overhead camera and let's do some painting. So here are some that I have in process and I've done that on purpose because this technique requires the paint to dry on the plate, which normally you'd be thinking, wait a minute, that doesn't sound like such a good idea. But in this case, that's what has to happen. And this is really considered true monoprinting. This is what people in the artist world that do monoprinting, this is what they're doing. They're always going to let the paint dry and then pick it up as one monoprint. Hence, mono equals one. Right. So to pick this up, I'm going to use the Liquitex iridescent medium. Let's see if you can see that. There we go. Love, love, love this medium. It is an acrylic base, which means it too can be mixed with all these paints. When you watch some of my other videos, you'll see that I do that all the time, mixing this with paints. But it also has this great iridescence that when this piece gets picked up, it's going to blow your mind. It's so, so amazing. So I'm going to use a brayer. Here's one of my brayers that I, you know, try to, I don't know. I don't really try to keep them clean, but I've been working on getting some of the paint off. You don't have to clean them. This is a gel press plate. All right. It is a ooey gooey, squishy kind of a um, medium stretch. Um, what would we call that? We would call that a substrate. Yeah, this is the thing I'm going to put it on, but it's not going to stay there. Everything I put on here will remove either right away or shortly thereafter. All right. So for this technique, I have already put the paint with the Posca pen down, some different sizes and widths. Well, I'll show you that. But we have to get this started. I put the iridescent paint, just a stream of it down here at the bottom. And so now I'm going to carefully, without creating much pressure, I'm going to roll it over the top of that dried paint. And I'm really, I wanted to get all my plates in so they're really, really close together. So this iridescent medium has now covered all of that dried paint. Now I'm going to put down a piece of fabric, which now I realize is going to cover up some of my other plates, but we'll make it work. Now the fabric I use is a high quality muslin. It is not the prepared for dyed, although you could. You also can do this on top of your existing um, fabrics. So if there's a fabric that you have that, you know, maybe a solid or something that you realize, you know what, I do not like that fabric as much as I thought I did, you can use that on top of your gel press plate. So I've put the medium down and I've just kind of, you know, I just smooshed it all down. I spread it all down. And this is going to be a little, I should have thought about this a little earlier. There, I'm going to curl that up so that it's not interrupting on the other plates that I'm going to work on. All right, so we're working on this little one and this I'm going to kind of sort of ish duplicate what I did on that and I'll use a few of my different Posca pens. So let's get to our real good close up. So this is the Posca pen. I mentioned how many widths that they come in. This one is kind of a chisel tip. It has already been primed, which means I um, shook it and then you push it down and let the paint get to it. And I'll do one of those with a dry one so you can see how it actually works. But now it's, I'm ready to paint. Now the last one I painted were these ones and I went, um, well, you're looking at it and it's horizontally, but for me it's vertically. But So now I'm gonna go in the opposite direction. And I'm just gonna take it right across 
the gel press plate. I like to pump it every once in a while, not overdoing it. If you pump too often, the paint will start to come out a little more than you want. So maybe just every couple, two, three times that you go across. And I'm not pushing hard. Um, one thing, when you're using the finer tips, be sure that what you're painting over is already dry. The finer the tip, it kind of can get clogged. So just be sure that when you're using fine tips, so let me see, let me show you what a fine tip would look like. This is one of the 5M, right? Uh, gotta have my whole hand take it off. And that's a fine tip. That's a 5M tip. That's what I did these initial lines with. When you're doing those, you want to be sure that the paint has already dried on the plate. When you're using bigger ones like this Bohemoth, this is the uh, PK17K. Oh, here's a good description. Fade proof, waterproof, odorless, brilliant colors. Yeah, that's what it's got. So I'm going to come over here, kind of prime it a little bit. This That time I went uh, your way which, which, okay, I'm going to go this way. So it's going to look vertical to you. It's actually twisted around on my screen. And this is going to lay just a big, fat stream of white. Okay. And because all that blue was not completely dry, it's picking up a little bit of that blue. You know what? I'm more than okay with that. That's fine by me um, if it's doing that. And when I did that, you see it got a little bit of blue on my pen. I could take um, I could take another piece and I could actually tap it off. But like if I come on over here, it'll actually come off of there and then I'll have a white one left. All right. So the next one I'm going to do is the moppers. So let me see. This is I'm going to go to my overhead. This is what the mopper case, now, when you buy a whole set, so I purchased the whole set. There you go. Big, huge guys. This is what it looks like. And when you get this guy, I want you to listen. There is a lot of paint in there. So when you look at the price, I want you to remember that there is a lot of paint in there. Now I'm going to take this one over here and I'm going to show you actually here you can kind of see if I just take it down on any regular surface it's going to make pretty much a perfect circle. This can be used on glass. I know um, that I've seen where people use this to do advertising or decorations on the windows of their stores, that kind of stuff. There's so many things you can do with a Posca pen. But I'm going to work now on my large, this is my 12 by 12 plate. You can only see a little bit of it. I am on top of a Tim Holtz, there it is, Tim Holtz glass mat, which is a tempered glass. The one to here, this one here is, I think it was a, a cuddle bug or one of those that had lines on it and I scratched the lines off. With the Tim Holtz, the lines are underneath. And for this, it's kind of nice because there is straight lines. So when I'm doing my painting on it for these plaids, I'm actually using those straight lines so that my plaid is ish straight. Okay, not going to be perfect. Haven't done anything perfect yet, so I don't know that I'm going to start now. So that's what the mopper does. Now I'm going to get another, oh, I'm going to do it on this big guy here too. So let's go to the close-up. So I did my whites going this way, so now I'm going to do this blue going the other way. Now the thing about mono printing is you can see that I'm kind of sort of covering up some of the previous, ooh, I just juiced it up. Let me come back here and give these a little bit more juice. When you mono print, the design, the paint, the whatever it is that you put on the plate first is going to be on the top of your, your print. So what I mean is here you see that I'm going to be covering up some of these lines. Well, that's okay because those lines will be on top of the blue that I'm putting now. So it's just, it's a really interesting thing. You've got to really try it. I've got lots of videos. I'll link that um, playlist below so you can see all the different kinds of things I've done. All right, so now I'm going to let that dry for a little bit. As we go on over to the big guy over here, this is one of the 
Let's do that. This is one of the Posca metallics. So there is a really fabulous metallic to this. And this is a, what I would call a medium sized tip. That's maybe, it's bigger than a quarter of an inch, definitely bigger than a scant quarter of an inch. See, and says how we are all quilters. We can relate to that. So I'm gonna go back to the big one and I'm gonna kind of fill in some of these spots with this metallic. I love metallic, metallic anything. The, like that iridescent medium. Oh my goodness, it's like one of my favorite things. I love the shiny, the sparkle. Not everybody does, um, but there's a lot of Pasca so you can decide which ones you want to be using. All right, so I'm gonna fill this one in and I'm filling this in pretty good. Um, when I put the paint on top of this though, this time I'm going to use a color so that you'll be able to see how that kind of comes through. And like I mentioned, this is a 12 inch plate. So I'm starting my line way over onto the other side that you can't see. All right, a couple more lines and I will have this full. I want these blue ones because I'm gonna make some of my um, New York beauties using that. So some of the bottom pieces, um, plaids are really, really fun in New York beauties if you've never tried that before. All right, so that looks pretty full. I need that to completely dry. So while that one is drying, we're going to come back and add a little bit more to this. So I was thinking that we would add this big white one again coming down the other way. So I'm going to juice it up over here on the side. I've used this one quite a bit. I always, no, sounds like there's still quite a bit of paint in there. And when I do it this time, that blue that I just put down is not completely wet. I mean, not completely dry. So it's going to smear that and give me a whole nother kind of look and color. Um, I, I'm all over more color. One of, the thing, one of the things that I actually struggle with is knowing when to say when. Um, always have when it came, comes to my quilting, when it comes to my painting, all of these things. I can't ever quite decide when to say when. All right, so I'm going to just juice this up over here and get some of that blue off. You can't see what I'm doing, though. It's over here, see? Trying to get some of that blue off, and I will be able to get it all off. I just have to use it a little bit more. And then we're going to use the light blue from the mopper. So I'm going to go back to my light blue. And this is how I'm going to get this one off. Oh, i got to show you how to prime a small one. But with the moppers, you take that little guy off. You take this off, and with the mopper, there really is no priming necessary. He's all white. When I take him over, so you, so you can see it, over here, da-da, he's there. So I'm just going to push him down a little bit and get him really, really juiced up. Okay, so now he's really juiced, and now I'm going to go, I'm going to go the same direction that I did with the white. There. And this will be the last coat I put on here because I really need this to dry so that I can hopefully show you what it's going to look like. A lot of times I'm not able to do that, so I'm going to get some of the dark blue off of that. Do, 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 make myself a whole little puddle here. Ooh, I'm going to add some of that over here. I hate wasting paint. So, All right, so that one is going to dry for a little bit. Coming on over here to my big one, it's still not completely dry. So while that is drying, let me show you a few other things you can do with the Posca pen. These are pieces of leather. If I, you wanna take, so, oh, I should show you how to prime one. All right, let me see, have I used this one yet? Nope, that one's already used. Which one have I not used in this new pack? Nope, I used that one. This is my newest pack. Did I use this black one? That would be an interesting one. Nope, I think I might have already primed all of these. All right, let's try a metallic. I don't think I've used all my metallics. These are the metallic packs. Um, I think I already used purple. So let's use this gold. I'm pretty sure I had not used the gold. There we go. So he is not primed yet. That means there is no paint on the tip of it at this point. Give it a little bit of a shake and then practice patience. So you're going to push down. I am holding it down two, three, four, letting it up, 
holding it down, two, three, four. Now, I usually I practice my patience a lot when I'm doing the pressing in the process of making a quilt. Um, you'll know that if you've ever watched any of my videos. Um, I'm an obsessive presser. I, I think that most people just don't press quite enough. But with this, you are really practicing your patience. You've just got to take your time. There it is. I can start to see the paint. Let me show you on the close-up. So you can kind of see, see how the paint is starting to come down into the tip. I'll get it over here. I'll prime it just a couple more times. It's down almost all the way. Couple more. Oh, that's looking good. One more and I'll be good. Yep. So on the overhead here, I'm going to show you this is leather. Keeping in mind, this would be totally permanent on leather. Um, so you could do this on purses, on shoes, on jackets, on pants, whatever you want. And look at, this is not a big tip, but look at how bold that is showing on the leather. Now this is gold, so I don't think it's going to show. Actually, even on a yellow leather, it is showing. Um, it's so permanent, you could do so many different things with it. Let me see if I can find... Another one that I've done. I can't find that, but I'm going to show you something else. All right. So here is a piece of fabric. Now this happens to be one of the ones I already painted, but it wouldn't have to be. Let's say that you have a fabric and, and these circles on that fabric, you want to maybe accent them a little bit. You can draw directly onto any fabric. All right. There. Now I'm actually creating accents on my fabric. So maybe it's, I just thought of this. What if it's a fabric with a whole bunch of words and there's a couple of the words on the fabric that you want to highlight? Well, go ahead and highlight them with your Posca pen and it will be permanent on the fabric. You can write anything. Let me see the mopper. Oh my goodness. It's going to be amazing on this. All right. There's that circle I talked about on fa paint fabric. It's going to keep that dot. So I, this happens to be, again, I said this is a painted fabric, but this could be on any fabric. How about a pair of jeans? You can totally paint up your jeans. Um, get a bunch of kids together and let them start doing that, and they will have a very good time. And then this not only does those dots, but would do very, very bold, bold, bold lines. And again, you got to prime it every once in a while to get it juicy, juicy, juicy. I do know that on paper, sometimes it seemed to me to get almost too juicy. So you've got to be careful with how much juiciness you get from your moppers. And this is another one. Another idea too. So this is one of the New York beauties that I'm making for that quilt that I showed you for my retreat. And when I got it done, I thought, you know what, this fabric and this fabric are a little bit too close. I need to make this fabric a little bit bolder, a little bit more of whatever it has. So I'm going to take, I don't know if I primed this one yet. This is a green metallic. Oh, I did. All right, let me take it over here, pump it just a couple times. I'm going to shake it. I'm going to add more green to the existing points. Oh, you can't see that. All right, I'm going to do something else then. I want to finish this. I can't show you with the close-up because it's um, got that other thing on there. So let's try just the regular green. Yep, that one's already primed. Oh, and I had actually taken a picture of something I wanted to show you, but I forgot to put it on. All right, you're not seeing this as well as I am. Once, I know it, I'm going to finish this and then I'll show it to you on the close-up so you can see it a little better. So I'm making more color if there's just not enough color. So think of how many times you've done something and you realize, you know, my colors were not quite there. Or <laughs> I've done this before where I accidentally... You put a little bit of the salvage into the quilt where you can see that little bit of a white. And that's all right. I don't mind. I can just take and um, add some paint to it. So now I'm going to take my mopper and I'm going to make this a little bit darker down here. Ooh, now that you can see. going to totally change the color. 
I'm not going to do the whole thing, so it'll almost look like I made a skinny band on this particular New York Beauty. Prime, pump, there. All right. And this will go, it will be totally permanent, but in this case, it did go, well, a little bit to the back side, but not too much. And let me show you on the close-up maybe what those greens look like. There. You can see the green metallic that I added. So now there's a little bit more variance in those colors there all right so the fabrics are drying on the plates i'm looking at the big one it looks just about done the little one has a little bit more to dry so let's go to the overhead oops i'm going to come over here and grab a piece of fabric so i'm ready oh my goodness do i have a big piece of fabric ready um dum 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 excuse me this would be when okay there's one this would be when it there'd be a B right back on the screen if I had one of those, but I don't. All right, so I'm going to come to the big one now. And on the big one, I'm going to add a little bit of color to it, maybe even a cream. All right, so this is kind of a, the with the dilutions, the colors in it are not often in my studio the exact color that it should be. I take these bottles, and when they get low, I actually will start mixing paints. I'll get some of the um, jacquard paints and mix two colors together. I'll even use the uh, dilutions and mix them together. Okay. Here, I'm going to put this that little piece is going to be a little bit in the way. I'm going to put a little stream right there. And I'm going to add a little bit of the iridescent medium to it um, because I need there to be a good amount of paint, not too much paint, so that it will lightly cover the entire piece. So this will end up being a yellow and blue plaid. The plaid will set on top, the blue plaid parts that I just painted will set on top of the yellow that I'm putting on right now. All right, and just enough so I can see some of the paint below, but then enough paint that it does the magic that it does. So this one is a just a neutral color of a muslin, and I'm going to be sure I push that down. I do not use a brayer. One of the questions people always ask is, can you use a brayer? Because this will get paint on my hands. I'm totally okay with that. It comes off the hands. It doesn't come off the fabric. I also wear my painting clothes. The clothes I'm wearing today are one of my many painting clothes, which pretty much means I forgot I was going to paint or didn't, and I come down, get paint on it, and that now turns that in my wardrobe to my painting clothes. All right, so I'm going to let that set, and we're going to come over to this one here. Now, there is a little bit. one. I can see that it's not completely dry. Like if I touch this right here, oh, well, okay, give me, give me a clean finger. All right, no paint, but right here, it's still a little bit wet. Um, so I'm just going to kind of pick up some of that wet. All right, the drier, the better. Ooh, that was a weird sensation, me going back and forth on that. All right, so this time I'm going to use, what am I going to use? I could do a little bit of a grayness. All right, so I've got a gray paint here. This one is Balmy Nights, a dilution. Let me shake it up. I'm not totally sure what is actually in this. Now this one I won't be able to peel up, so you'll have to look at um, my Facebook page probably to see some of the actual, what these actually look like. So here I'm going to put a stream of this balmy on. I don't want it to be too gray. So again, I'm going to add my most favorite iridescent medium. Cap that up. Um, I've got a lot of yellow on this particular brayer, so I'm going to grab a t-shirt and clean off my brayer a little bit just because I don't want there to be there. Now it's actually cleaner-ish, right? I'm going to just run that up. So this will be a plaid with a gray background. I mean, how unique is that? Right. Probably got maybe I'm going to say a little bit more paint on it. And what that means is that I'm going to have to let it set quite a bit longer than maybe the other one because the it's going to need a little bit more time to actually pick up the paint, to pick up the mono. All right, so now I'm going to take my piece of white muslin. I'm going to put that down. 
All right. And I also can tell, see there, the paint is coming through. That means I put on more than I needed to. I say too much paint, but it's not like it hurts it at all. Um, I just didn't need to use quite this much. And I'm going to leave this on for a good, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes. All right. So we've been here on camera for 30 minutes now. And so that means that the center one could, should, might possibly be ready. So I'm coming to this one. I can't take these two off on the sides. Those ones you'll have to wait to see. Um, if I could find a way to add them to the video, I would, but I'm not sure I know how. So I'll show them in Facebook. So go to the on point dash TV on Facebook. So this one, I'm going to peel it. And as I peel it, it's not quite ready, but I don't want to, I want you to see what's happening. Okay. As I'm peeling it, if I leave this here another 10 minutes, when I peel it, every little bit of paint will come up. But because I'm rushing it a little bit, it's looking great here, and there is some paint being left behind, which honestly is perfectly fine. That'll just mean that later on when I do painting, it'll come up on those. But if you leave this here 20 minutes or so, when you peel it up, it's going to peel up and your plate will be perfectly clear. And here you can see just a smidge bit here. That was some that was left over from one of my previous pulls. So patience is, yeah, so sometimes some of the painting I do don't require, doesn't, oh man, me and my English, doesn't require that much patience. But when you're using these and you want it to really pull up completely, you have to give yourself some patience. So I'm just about pulled. And look at how beautiful that plaid is that I just made. Nancy's only. Um, nobody else will have a plaid just like this. This is for me and me alone, right? So let's put it down here and then you can see it on the close up. There you go. And I don't know if you can see, you really can't, well, a little bit. Okay, right there, up here by my fingers, where the white is, that's not really white. That's the iridescent medium coming through because I've got a white base that I've created. So I've made my own plaid using the Posca pens. The Posca pens can literally be used on just about any surface and be permanent on any porous, so leather and wood and fabric. Um, there you can be using it on windows when you want to decorate windows. You can um, draw on your clothing. Super fun to do it on a pair of sneakers, something like that. So it can be really personalized. Think about getting a group of kids together and see what they can do with this. I really think that you'll enjoy what Posca pens can bring to your quilting or whatever other craft that you are working on. There's links below to the joggles.com. If you follow that link, I do get a um, little bit of a um, commission on that. So I would appreciate that. I've also included the link to Sue Penn's Etsy shop. And I think I'm going to put a code down there so that you'll get 10% off anything that you purchase on Sue Penn's Etsy shop. Thank you very much for joining. Maybe share this video with somebody that you think might be interested. I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment. And when you do that subscribe, if you hit that notifications bell, that means that anytime that I put out a new video, you will actually get a little notification saying, Nancy put out a video. Nothing else. I'm not going to bug you. I'm not going to call you. But then you'll just know or just come back every once in a while. And I do have a Facebook page, like I mentioned. I have the On Point Dash TV Facebook page. You can find me there. And if you've got some things that you want to share, maybe you've painted something. I would love to see if you've been doing any painting yourself. So for that, you can go to Quilting with Nancy Show and Share. And that there's just a few questions you answer and then I approve you in. And then you can see what everybody else is working at. Thank you very much for joining me and have a great day.